This conference will now be recorded. So give us a uh, uh, overview. Hello, uh, my name is Amit. Yeah. Uh, yes, I'm Amit. Uh, I'm Amit Dantawar. I'm basically a CPMU consultant from last nine years. Okay. So you say be consultant in the sense of uh, technical consultant, functional consultant, or uh, what kind of, uh, uh, you know, background? SAP MM, material management. Okay. okay. Material management consultant. Okay, may I know why you are interested in moving to AMDG? So what you are looking out uh, of this? See, uh, in our current project, telling you uh, and currently when we are working project in uh, each and every organization right now it is happening that material master is completely governed by mdg first thing and uh, several projects like material harmonization projects are going on in our company so they are making thought sap mdg should learn for the same okay, okay. So can as a, the other candidate is Uday, right? Udit, yeah, hi, Jinivas. Udit. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, currently I have like 3.6 year experience in uh, customers and vendors like in MM, but not through like in full MM, like I'm working on the case yeah, community handling contact application and settlement so but it's my new in my project like uh, mdg is a new tool like which is comes uh, in my hand so that's why i want to learn this okay so so you do have any experience in uh, you know any other objects or any other tools like app or it's like you only handle mm or, uh, no, for the if you go with the co like coding part, I don't have any knowledge. I'm in a functional. Okay. Hmm. So both of you, uh, have you ever uh, you know work uh, seen MDG screens? How it look like? What is the concept of MDG? Any understanding on that, or is it completely new tool? No, no, I understand. Think? Like I've created a like change request. Like I worked, but I'm not like I have hands on, but I don't have any knowledge on that inside, back end side. Okay, fine. So what about you, Amit? So have you worked with the MDG tool? No, no, it is a new, completely new topic. Okay, fine. Uh, but before that I start like Sinus, I have one question like if I ask to anyone for anyone to like uh, What like what is the MDG like many people are saying nah, it's a technical So is this right? I'm not sure like so actually here when we talk about uh, MDG um, so, so How the resources are getting moved right? So it's it's a kind of a techno functional uh, role but it doesn't mean that a person who doesn't have md uh, you know abap knowledge uh, can be a techno uh, you know uh, can be an mdg function because i have seen uh, that most of the resources are moving from mdm to mdg where they don't have any uh, you know understanding on the you know back end abap uh, skill set or technical knowledge mm -hmm. From an MDG functional perspective, uh, you know most of the organization. So it's always a plus when you have you know multiple skill set. Like in case if you have an ABAP, you have a better understanding. Uh, but it it is not a limitation, hard limitation. Okay, so to become an MDG consultant, MDG functional consultant. So it's always uh, you know from an MDG consultant uh, without you know background uh, you know ABAP skill set. So what is what you can leverage or what you can understand better is or what you can uh, you know where you can uh, better put you know <clears throat> put yourself as an MDG consultant is you can understand what are the different modules available in MDG what are the different things which is possible I would say that you know you need a technical understanding what is something is feasible what is something is not feasible okay not you know core technical how you are going to write the logic or uh, that is not something is not required but what are the different frameworks are supported in mdg uh, so let's say for example uh, material uh, when you talk about material so how you can uh, you know 
create material how you can you know add custom fields in a material or how it can be done you know so when we talk about so we talk about data modeling where you can write that logic how you can extend that ui how you can use that uh, specific uh, field how you can replicate it to that uh, you know source what are the different uh, you know replication mechanism you have so those kind of understanding we need uh, it will help you and uh, Again, everything is a kind of a you no know, touch base when you uh, when you talk about a functional consultant It's not always a pure functional consultant, right? So it's always linked with a tied up with a you know technical uh, Enhancement or uh, you know technical implementation at the back end So but you need to understand whether it is technically feasible or not or is it something you know whether you can achieve it or not so with the help of tech MDG technical consultant, you know, you can put uh, to the client whether it is feasible or not Okay. So Asha, do we have the other candidate or? Asha, are you there? It's like, look like, like two candidates only joined. Hello? Okay. Yeah, Asha. Can you make yeah, me organizer as well? Yes, yes, yeah. Actually, another candidate is not joined yet. He will uh, join within uh, five to ten minutes, so you can start the session. Hello, Shinyas, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear. I'm just sharing my screen. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, so to tell about myself, uh, myself is Srinivas. Uh, I have, I'm, uh, you know, uh, started my career as a ABAPR and then uh, I just worked as, uh, you know, worked with the uh, CRM MDM and then MDG moved to MDG. So, uh, you know, overall around uh, six plus years of experience I have in MDG. I have implemented uh, finance objects implemented business partners implemented the materials and i have worked as a kind of a techno functional uh, mdg uh, consultant so i have i do have experience in multiple uh, you know versions of mdg so currently i'm working with mdg the latest version mdg s4 s4 mdg 18.09 and we do have also a parallel versions which are supported with the uh, normal ecc which is mdg 9.2 so the current system, I believe you can see my screen. Uh, the, the current system, which I'm working with this uh, MDG 9.0 version. Okay, so this is uh, MDG 9.0. So you can see the MDG version here. So this is a version which I'm currently showing. So let me go to the front end. So MDG is a kind of an, uh, you know, ABAP stack only. So it's not a different system. So there are different uh, models so how you can implement, whether you can implement as a co-deploy solution that is on top of your ECC, uh, you can implement uh, a MDG, or you can go with a separate system, a separate a box, SAP box, where you are going to use only MDG solution, okay? Even though you have T codes like MM01, MM02, MM03, 
but you will not use those decodes rather you use only mbg functionality over that box so that we call it as a hub model so there are two deployments model for mbg one is either core deployment or as a hub model okay so core deployment so most of the organization goes with a separate system for ma managing all the master data so that where we go with to you know hub model most of the organizations with go with the hub model but it doesn't mean that you can implement install mdg on top of it uh, so you can go with the core deployment option but there are certain uh, you know uh, pros and cons with both of them so you can so based on the business need so either you can go with uh, hub or core deployment so but as i mentioned so hub is the one which is a preferred option for most of the organizations because uh, you can maintain uh, master data without any uh, uh, issue with uh, without any consistency without any uh, dependency on the ecc you can upgrade you can upgrade your master data solution sap solution sap mdg solution without upgrading ecc box or s4 box okay so that is the main advantage let me go to the front end i'll show you how the front end looks like so mdg front end it's mostly uh nwbc that is a webdin pro application webdin, uh, webdin pro based on a fury uh, you know fpm application so it's like uh, the front end is always uh, you know internet based applications either it is being a webdin pro or a fury based application so here I'll show you, you know, so since we have, you know, both of you are interested with material, let me show you material, how it look like. So we have standard roles. So let me take with MM role. Refresh. Go with NWBC. So what I'm going to show you or demo you here is I'm going to show you on high level, at least a look and feel how the MDG application is going to be, and what are the different concepts we have in the material governance so let's say we have a different tab so based on the role this uh, governance will be comes in picture and uh, so when we talk about the curriculum so we will be discussing a few bits uh, pieces of the roles the what are the different roles uh, different authorizations available how you can control uh, what are the different objects the end user can access with or work with so we will be talking about uh, roles and authorization which are related to mdg and we will be creating a custom role and uh, show how you can customize the role so what are the different options the user can you know see so how you can customize that how you can restrict a user if he doesn't wants to be uh, you know work with material or different material group how you can uh, you know customize it so how you can restrict at the role level what are the different configurations available at the mdg to enable those so that is something we can discuss so here let me go to the home page so material processing so there is some issue with the sandbox so i'll directly go to the search page okay so the main uh, advantage of uh, you know having a governance uh, tool uh, in your organization is so to have a better visibility on the data to avoid inconsistency in the data to avoid a reductant data in your organizations okay so when you talk about search screen so this is how a search screen so we have different kind of uh, uh, searches available in the application so when we talk about material we do have 
you know uh, exact search we so most of the organization goes with uh, you know tracks or hana based search where you can search uh, where it have some capability of error tolerance search and other stuffs okay so here i am having some basic material search i can search with the material and uh, so this is from an end user perspective whenever they wanted to create a material uh, from a, you know master data team they they will be given access to a material you know the, those mdg authorization screens either being at a uh, uh, you know front end nwbc uh, so i'm not sure whether the sandbox is having a fury so i believe fury is installed but uh, we can go through that fury as well uh so here you have uh, the search screen where you can search for it so here we have uh so let me try to i think i need to set up the system properly <clears throat> this is a new system i got it today so i'm not sure so let me uh, go with a simple uh, application let's say a finance object so i just give you a flavor on uh, the complete process so generally most of the uh, all the mdg applications you know sap recommended is having a search so we can have uh, different searches as mentioned like hana search track search db search uh, fuzzy search you know so all these searches comes in picture where you can uh, configure uh, at the back end uh, different searches how you want to search what are the different fields you can search with whether it can be a render tolerance search for example when i search with uh, a name uh so there can be a error uh, so spelling mistake so so sap have the capability where you can search with uh, a kind of error tolerance let's see i'll just again this is nothing is set up in the system so you can search for the uh, you know the whatever the master data here is and based on the master data so if uh, if the end user doesn't see that the master data is available in an organization in that master data set so either he can create a new master data or he can change a master data okay so let's say i just wanted to create a master data so what happens is whenever you try to create a master data so there will be a kind of uh, a process a container which will take you uh, take the master data throughout the process you know when i talk about process uh, what it what i mean by process is uh, a governance process uh, you can uh, have a change request so through which you want to control what are the different validations the master data should goes with so okay so these are the fields i wanted to be make it mandatory when i just wanted to create that specific master data so for example material when i create a material so these are the set of master data fields which i needs to be mandatory these are the set of fields which should get automatically derived based on the user or based on the authorizations or based on the you know different fields like based on the material group i want to you know uh make a uh, certain fields mandatory uh, location or plan so these these fields are needs to be mandatory or derived so this is something uh, you know can be done based on the change request process based on the process and based on the uh, you know uh, based on the change request i can define who the uh, approver of the master data is so let's say i'm just wanted to create a material based on the material creation i do want to you know set a, a specific approval process for this so this is a kind of defined at the back end so based on the uh, uh, data which i'm going to create the, the material will go the change this will go in certain approval process so all these are a kind of a process a governance process which will be configured by an mdg functional consultant based on the business need so here a uh, change request is, as i mentioned is a kind of container so kind of a package which is going to hold your master data till all the process is complete so it's a kind of an id for example if you goes to a bank 
and if you wants to apply a loan so you will get a you know a, a reference id or an application id uh, so throughout the process you know so the moment you submit the document uh, you will referring with uh, uh, with this particular application id whenever you have some issues you will contact the person or uh, the corresponding person who was dealing with that with that specific application id and when you are going with uh, you know so there will be a uh, updates okay we have submitted this document it is for under review or it is under approval process once it is approved you you uh, your loan amount will be dispersed to your account okay that that is a kind of an application id through which the complete process drives in so here in mdg we call it as a change request okay it doesn't mean only changes to a master data it always it also means any changes to the master data okay being it a create or change block unblock deletion everything goes via change request process uh, through mdg so here i can i you know create a master create a call center so addition custom which is specific to mdg i'll will be discussing it later so this is not relevant to material so here this is the screen where the end user fill in the master data details so here you know since i have some issues with the material just taken uh, so here you can mention the description of why you are going with this uh, you know the master data creation and here you have the fields uh different fields which you can populate in and you can see the mandatory fields which are this set and uh, there can be certain validation which can be po popped up so let's say i'll default certain key some kind of configuration at the back end which is setting this call center rhythm into some external number profit center let me take profit centers so we will be you know discussing how you can customize these screens additions available So based on the master data, different uh, UIs can be generated. For example, when we talk about material, a different UI will be available for that, uh, you know, specific activity. So let let's say I just fill in the mandatory fields. This this will be, you know, can be created based on the transaction code which we have at the backend. Okay. So when we talk about material, you have different, uh, you know, tabs where you can enter, uh, you know, the the material basic classification data, one basic data, one two classifications, and other, uh, you know. Uh, commodity related details so all the different details you can enter at the back end so similarly a different uh, kind of ua can be you know uh, created for the material here so i think that there is no uh, proper set of this organization so as part of demo we will be discussing and set up the complete system
so what happens is see here uh, so what i just wanted to show here is so for example one the moment we have uh, the screens the complete screens user can fill in uh, them uh, the the, uh, the required data and he can submit the request so here this screen is based on uh, you know this is something can be customized based on the requirements so for example there can be certain uh, things called lean request and uh, there can be certain th things you know for example as a requester when i try to create a material or uh, any master data i will not i may not have the complete details so you can configure the screens accordingly so that only the re relevant or the mandatory fields which needs to be set up by the requester can be you know displayed here so based on that uh, so the moment he submits the request there can be an another person who can review and update all the re related details uh, regarding to that specific uh, you know uh, master data for example in case of business partner i just name, uh, only know the name uh, of the business partner and <coughs> excuse uh, country few address details but i know i don't know where he fits in from a sales organization perspective or i don't know the required uh, you know uh, uh, details the banking details of the customers and all the other details so maybe i can set up a simple screen where i can uh, create a simple business partner and there can be a separate team who can review the organization and uh, fill in the corresponding details and then submit the request and then a person who can approve the request so this is how uh, uh, you know a master data flow can be there and here at the uh, at the moment uh, you know i submit the request i can enable a duplicate check that means it will based on the details which you fill in and see whether that based on that details whether is there any customer already available in the organization or not so that is something can be configured so let me see whether the duplicate check is configured over here i don't think but we can configure the duplicate check so based on the duplicate check you can uh, you know mention uh, whether it is a duplicate so there can be an additional pop-up says okay based on the details the i can the system identify these are the different duplicates you can see whether it is whether that customer already exists if not exists you can start going with the creation of a new customer or a new business partner new material if it does exist what you can do is you can switch to that specific material you can you can make the changes accordingly or you can you know ignore this creation process so this way the in mdg you can ensure uh, there is no duplicated uh, duplicate records created in the system so we will be discussing about that you know duplicate how to configure the duplicate check how you can you know configure the match profile how you can search for that so that is something we will be discussing in future uh, in the in the session and here uh, as i mentioned uh, so we will be discussing how to uh, configure these uh, uis how you can you know remove the uis fields how you can you know default certain values how you can certain make certain fields mandatory so the validations and derivations we will be discussing how you can use the brf plus applications what are the limitations you have what are the things you can achieve how you can make certain fields mandatory so there are the technical aspects how you can do what so that is something you can do uh, you know we will be discussing and we will be also discussing the personalization for example there are different layouts as i mentioned you can you know personalize these layouts you don't need to you know fill all the details so that will be discussed and all these will be based on the ui the validation everything is based on a concept called data model so which is the core for the complete uh, you know master data governance so what is this data model is on a very high level you can see let's say i want to maintain a material okay using mdg so that i want to put in some governance certain validation process and uh, you know all this stuff comes in so how you can define it is first that there, there will be a kind of data data model is nothing but a structure of the master data which you are going to maintain let's say these are the fields i'm going to maintain these are the different tables i'm going to maintain so then you have to define it at the define it at one place so then only the system knows okay these are the fields or these are the tables i'm going to govern so that's where the data model comes in picture so for uh, mdg uh, when we talk about mdg there are certain standard data models available like finance for business partner and for material we have standard data models okay when i talk about finance it have you know few standard objects available like uh, GL accounts, cost centers, profit centers, cost elements, uh, financial structures and hierarchies, cost center hierarchy, profit center hierarchy. So these are the things which can be maintained by standard using the standard data model. And uh, when we talk about business partner, we do have uh, you know business partner, customers and suppliers. 
so this can be maintained using uh, the standard business object and we talk about material so we have material uh, which can be maintained in uh, using standard um, data model but it all the organizations will not go with the standard so there is always a customization so which will which was done uh, by for the you know a custom uh, to to uh, to accommodate the you know the corresponding organization business needs so there can be a custom fields added in the in the material for example the mara table or but triple zero table or you know lf in uh, the corresponding master data would be extended uh, for a specific need to accommodate the the, the business uh, need okay so we need to as part of governance what we'll do is we need to understand what are the different fields which which was which needs to be maintained in MDG. What is the specific reasons? If there is, if the standard MDG doesn't support, so then we need to extend that, uh, extend the standard data model with the corresponding business uh, fields which needs to be maintained. And accordingly, we need to extend the UI. So we will be discussing how, what are the different ways you can extend it, uh, what are the different possibilities we have, uh, how you can extend the UI. So these things we will be discussing, and what are the different, uh, you know ways you can you know configure the ui as well so that will be discussed and once the moment we submit all the you know mandatory fields then you can you know click on submit and you will uh, we will there will be a change request created and each change request as i mentioned you can configure the workflows uh, how it should goes where it should go who can act on that specific application so that is something can be discussed and the validation <coughs> which will be discussed during this session Okay, how you can write a validations and all the steps. So I'm not sure whether the uh, workflow has been configured in this uh, specific sandbox. Okay, we will be discussing. We will be discussing in detail about the rule-based workflow uh, and the standard workflow. How you can uh, write a workflow accordingly uh, to the business need and uh, how you can notify a customer. For example, whenever there is a request, so it can be. Uh, a request can be created and you need to notify a specific person how you can notify it how you can create such notifications what are the different ways you can do what and uh, and you know once it is approved again uh, so for example so i have different workflows all the specific approvals i got it and the finally you have to replicate the data to the ECC system or the any other system like you know material Ariba or any other integrations you have you know uh, <clears throat> so you can integrate it to different system using different replication models which you have so there we will be discussing about how you can replicate the master data using idoc or web services or using you know rfc connections how you can replicate those master data from mdg so how you can integrate mdg to a different system so that we will be discussing uh, from an end to end perspective so so from an MDG, so as I mentioned, you can search for a master data, you can create master data, and you can change master data, and you can enable certain validations and derivations to the master data. You can control the governance process around it by using a proper approval process, proper validations and derivations, and having a proper uh, duplicate checks, address cleansings, enhancements, and then you can replicate, you can have a proper governance by having a approval process. And then once it is approved, you can replicate that master data to uh, different, uh, you know, systems by the different integrations we have. On top of that, we have, you know, few concepts like, uh, you know, key mapping, value mapping. Uh, we will be discussing about data import frameworks and we will be discussing about consolidation process because consolidation is again a kind of a mass process through which you can you know load or change multiple master data at one shot so we will be discussing about these consolidation process mass change and all the other stuff okay so this is the uh, uh, the core uh, course curriculum so let me put it in points so we will be starting with uh implementation uh, system setup so how to start setting up the system mpg solution being it a co-deployment or an hub model uh, 
so we will be discussing about what are the basic uh, setup needs to be done before starting the uh, you start using the system for MDG. Okay, so we'll be discussing about the different system setups and different implementation model like you know hub model co deployment model when we can go with the sub model when we can go with this co deployment how you can load the data and all the stuff and then uh, data loading or cleansing so we can understand how you can load the data or bring the configuration to the mdg hub if it is an app mdg so we'll be discussing that and then we talk about data modeling so here we will be discussing about the you know uh, the different standard models available how you can extend a standard data model by adding a field or adding a table uh, by which which we call it as an entity and then we call, we will create a custom data model okay from the scratch to understand how you can you know create a data model from the scratch on the relationships uh, entities all these things we will be discussing and then we will be discussing about ui modeling so what are the different uh, you know fun, uh, things we can do with how you can customize the ui how you can add new fields or what are the different uh, you know uh, technical aspects behind it uh, so like <clears throat> Context based adaptions and uh, UI layout, you know, it's, it's, it will be, you know, straightforward from a functional consultant. So, to understand what are the different things possible using MDG. And then, here is the way uh, a functional consultant needs to, pro, you know, focus more. So, in case of process modeling, we will be, so we will be there talking about uh, change request configurations. And we will be talking about different workflows. So here we will be talking about rule based workflows. And normal workflows. So how you can you know set up different workflows and uh, we will be having a specific topic on validations and derivations. What are the different validations and derivations applicable? And then we will be talking about replication frameworks. What are the different replication framework? How you can replicate? What are the different configurations you can set up? Uh, like a DRF, IMG, data replication framework. How you can manually replicate? How you can replicate using change pointers? How you can replicate immediately? So all these things will be discussed in the replication uh, framework. And we will be talking about data uh, import framework, DAF. So how you can mass load the data, what are the different mechanism, different applications we have within MDG to change the master data. And we have something called, uh, uh, you know, key mapping value mapping concept. And we have, uh, you know, additions. So these are related to finance object, but I just wanted to cover that as well. Hierarchies. So hierarchy is something, you know, available standard. For finance object, but we can also create it for customers, business partners, materials, hierarchies. So the, that the, those things also can be possible. So we'll be discussing about these as standard R concepts, and then we will be talking about consolidations and uh, Fury applications. So I'll show you the standard Fiori applications. What are the standard uh, Fiori applications available? So consolidation is uh, by default the standard Fiori application. We will be discussing the uh, how to use consolidation, where we can use consolidations and all the other steps. Okay. So this is how a uh, very high level you know course content which we'll be taking through in the in the, in the mentioned order. So this is how we are going to cover the complete MDG uh, syllabus as well. So any questions or anything you just wanted to cover up which is missed in this yeah brf is missing so the validations and derivation is based on brf plus okay brf plus and baddies and what about ad hoc also uh, coming here or no? so the replication model when we talk about replication so we will be discussing about Standard iDocs, uh, SOA, which is nothing but uh, web services, RFCs. So these things will be covered in the uh, replication uh, replication models.
and even this uh, rule based workflow is also a beer of plus application only so any other specific topic or uh, any questions hello uh, my question is like this that from this depo i come to understand what are the masters are there in sap right now in mdg it is rule by approval process right and uh, i think that is only mdg correct no it's it's not only uh, you know so when you talk about um, you know in the normal ecc process so you go to if you want to create a material what you do uh, so you will maybe you can explain your current organization process how you create a material mm. i'll i'll set up set it up, you know get define how you can define it in mdg what is advantages and disadvantages over there so in your organization how will create a material see normally mm01 we are creating material what happen mm. mm01 we are uh, if internal material number is we are empty so keeping material number empty selecting industry selecting material type after that uh, several views we are what our views are there we are selecting basically basic data let's say one is to small material analytics i will create a basic data one and accounting one that okay. i will select i will select plant and uh, uh, that material name material group and valuation class and value or uh, standard price or doing price i will put and i will say so in this way i will prepare material okay so in this case so in in mdg how it works is for material so you have the the basic the field properties and everything is based on the configuration which you do in the material okay the spr or the configuration will be reused by a material mdg okay so the main advantage over here is so okay who will uh, give you the uh, you know so uh, from a functional consultant perspective so there will be certain persons who will be you know requesting you to create a material category or material right so here we will be giving them access directly so that they can create the material so is here you will receiving some request from you know some business users right correct yes so here the uh, the 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 thing over here is so as a process perspective we will giving identifying uh, you know either a central team or it's, it it you know, depends on the organization either you will be given access to the material and you you know human tends to make mistake okay so there can be a uh, you know either you can create a wrong material or there can be inc incomplete data so which is something difficult so the moment you say so for example you told you you will be working with different uh, you know master data right within the, the industry or classifications all these things so you you can save a material without all these details as well right so if there is any incorrect data or incomplete data the moment you say, you know save it so it will be available for a transactional to perform any material okay you can create a, you know uh, a purchase order or sales or you know whatever the tra transaction so you can perform a transaction on top of that the incorrect or incomplete master data which is available right mm -hmm. but in mdg what happens is till all the approval process are completed okay there is no governance in the in the current tool which you are working at the, the current mm mm01 or mm02 there is no governance process okay here what happens is uh, the you will create a material okay it will not be available immediately in the back end tables like mara so that means it will not be available any transaction so there cannot be any transaction performed until all the governance process is set up okay all the validations are complete all the duplicate so here in mm01 you don't have an option to perform a any duplicate check okay you can search for it even if it exists you can create a new material with the same details right okay. so here with the mdg you have a duplicate check that means you cannot create a reductant data in your uh, in your master data and you mm -hmm. have an approval process okay that means a third eye principle is there okay you man tends to make mistake but with this approval mm -hmm. with this governance process we are ensuring that okay you are creating a right data and you can enforce mm -hmm. validations uh, that means you you are you know so as a system perspective you are validating okay you are employee you know introducing the complete data so all this comes in picture and then here the material which you are creating 
can be replicated to multiple system even in ecc uh, you might be replicating it to other systems as well okay like ariba and all the other mm-hmm. systems you might be replicating it so from mdg mm-hmm. uh, being it as a single source of truth so you can replicate it to uh, multiple different systems based on the requirement mm-hmm. okay and uh, you can have a duplicate check the complete governance process in place so this way mm-hmm. it ensures uh, the complete you know master data governance so that is the main advantages of going for a material mdg tool okay. okay so these functionalities it's difficult to get it in the normal ecc box uh, with the current uh, you know uh, technology a uh, current uh, with the current tool current ecc box okay? okay that's where sap don't want to change anything in the ecc box okay they have created mm-hmm. a new tool a separate tool to uh, to adhere all this governance and the policies mm-hmm. and then uh, by which you have a better master data in your organization Okay. Any other questions? So I can see Vijay joined the call. Hi Vijay, are you there? Hello. Uh, hello. Yep. Um, I just wanted to know uh, uh, the course covers uh, MDG 8.0 or MDG 9.0. MDG 9.0. MDG 9.0. Okay. Okay. and uh, i am basically from a, a techno functional background i mean i started out with apap but uh, i also now take care of the sd module in my company so um, mdg basically uh, will be a part of the functional uh, functional area or more of a technical it's a techno functional area okay so if you are having a technical knowledge then you can uh, you know have a very be- good understanding on the mdg okay but it it means you need a functional understanding and also the technical understanding will help you uh, you know to shine as a functional consultant mdg techno functional is always having a very good demand in the market okay okay any other questions okay so if no question so we can wind up this session and uh, harsha might uh, reach out to you so if you have any other questions on the timing on the other stuff uh, you can reach out to harsha and accordingly we can uh, you know start the sessions so we have already you know planning to start a session so we have a couple of join uh, candidates already you know and already the couple of demos happened so based on your availability we can you know start the sessions okay okay thank you thanks for your time thanks for your time bye